Hello and welcome to another Mr. Salas video showing you how to get the very top grades really easily. So the main problem with the description question is that no writer would write four to 500 words of description. If they did, the reader is likely to go, no, not by the book. But that's what you have to do in the exam. What is the solution? Well, I'm going to take you to the 2019 AQA paper. Here it is, free and available on the internet, so it's in the public domain. Now, check out the picture. It's a painting, and our task is to describe a market scene. Now, the technique is to pretend that the painting, the picture, the photograph, whatever you're getting in the exam, is an exhibit in an art gallery. Now, what that allows you to do is look at it from a different perspective and wonder what the photographer or the artist was up to. So we have a painting of a market scene and I'm just going to go into it and it's a kind of a journey wondering what the artist was up to. So where does the artist take my eye? Well, to these two characters in the centre, the man and the woman. I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, What's their relationship? What's going on here? He looks like he's staring at her, but his eyes are hidden. And she looks like she's trying to step right to get away from him. It looks kind of ominous, doesn't it? And then I look around the image and I see the swordfish who's been decapitated with the great sword sticking up in the air. And then I see what looks like a pig that's been filleted and hung from the ceiling. And there's a butcher stabbing away at the, at the meat. It looks kind of threatening. And then in the background, it looks much more peaceful. I've got cheeses, I've got lots more women away from this threatening man. By the swordfish, I've got another threatening man who's grabbing hold of the sword in a sort of, I don't know, violent way or suggestive way at any rate. And then what have I got in the foreground? Well, I've got these colours. The red is still there with the what look like lobsters or shrimp or prawns. And I've got these peppers things and then there's the green of the vegetables I can't tell what the hell they are though because maybe the painter isn't interested okay now everything I've explained to you I've picked up and you would pick up in 30 seconds or so and that's my plan yeah there's no there's no writing a big plan I'm just going to trust what I'm seeing and now I put myself in the place of the artist. Let's see what that looks like in the first paragraph. The artist might have waited for just this moment. A man, a woman, a narrow path between stalls selling violence and carnage. The man looks predatory, his eyes in shadow and wearing what looks like a turtleneck jumper and a leather jacket. He blocks her path. The artist was probably a woman because she sees her subject try to alter her path. She steps away from the swordfish, the parade of decapitated heads thrusting their blades into the air. But to her right hangs the flayed carcass of a pig, its shiny muscles and sinews stripped of flesh and glistening. Perhaps there are flies circling. Perhaps this is the lesser of two evils. Behind the pig, a butcher sculpts its flank with a knife like an artist. To her left, the fishmonger grabs hold of a fish head sword in a manner that can only be calculated to disgust her. Now, you can go back and look at the techniques. If I were you, I'd focus on the verbs. However, I'm just showing you the paragraph to show you how I use the image. I've just gone for a journey through what I can see in the image. Now, when I wrote that first paragraph, I didn't clutter my thinking worrying about descriptive techniques. I know that I'm going to be using descriptive techniques inevitably because I am describing what's in the painting. But what's going to raise the level of my marks compared to everybody else who's doing this exam, is I have a really interesting viewpoint. I've asked myself what the artist was up to, and that's forced me to think creatively. It hasn't made me think for long, I've just written everything that I came up with. 
But it gave me this idea, like, is the artist male or female? In other words, who does the artist want us to pay most attention to or to side with in this picture? Is it the man with the darkened eyes turned slightly away from us? Or is it the woman whose face we can't even see, but whose movement we're aware of? Where does the power relationship lie between these two? And that's going to allow me to be really descriptive and creative in all the rest of my paragraphs. My point is that once you start thinking about the artist, loads of ideas will just come to you rather than sitting there looking at a blank page wondering what the hell you're going to describe in a marketplace. Some of you might never have been to a marketplace. In my second paragraph, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that there are people in the scene, so here's a description of my characters. The scene looks French, if the cheeses are anything to go by, and so we'll call the trapped woman trying to change direction Bernadette. Turtleneck leather man looks like a poser, the only person in the scene wearing more than shirt sleeves. He must love that jacket in this heat. We'll call him Jacket Man. Jack, for short. And here all I've done is ask myself why the artist is showing me this. She probably wants me to know that it is a French scene, seaside resort. Well, a coastal one anyway from the fish and the cheeses. Might not be French, but it works for me. The man's clothing is overdressed, so I've just concluded he's a poser, someone who likes dressing up. And the idea that he's Jacket Man moving to Jack for short... I didn't plan that, it just came to me as I was writing. And that's what I mean about trusting the details in the picture to help you as you write. In my third paragraph, I hope you can see that being able to think about the characters has made my description much more interesting than just writing about the scene. Bernadette is not dressed to attract attention, not from the back anyway. Her waist looks like it's starting to thicken, though no one could call her fat. Coming up to middle age, perhaps. The two small bags she's carrying might mean she lives alone, shopping for one, or the market may be a daily ritual. The artist hasn't cropped the scene too tightly. She wants us to revel in the colours as well as the blood red of meat. Bernadette has passed boxes of red peppers, crowding the scene with the blush of pink lobsters, and these jostle against the sheaths of green vegetables. Unlike the meat, they seem to lack a form or an identity. We can't tell if one box displays cauliflower or artichokes, and jam next to it could be leeks or courgettes, or even cobs of corn still in their green leaf sleeves. So really, I'm just listing the sort of stuff that I can see, describing it as vividly as I can with colour. And the idea of jamming these descriptive sentences together is that they overload our senses, at least visually. Notice, though, I'm still going on a journey, which is why I've got the image of Bernadette having passed these boxes of red peppers. The journey really helps to give my description some action, some impetus, and it also helps me it, again, it means I don't have to plan. I know that I can introduce movement into my writing by thinking about it as a journey. Now, when I started writing, I had no twist in my mind at all. I was simply going to write about Jack as a kind of predatory male who's making life really awkward for this woman. Let's see what it looks like. So Jack is drawn to the meat, and we wonder... Is Bernadette just another kind of meat to him? Has he blocked the path to make her struggle to squeeze past him for the thrill of it, exercising his power, telling himself perhaps that she would enjoy the forced contact as much as him? We're all animals after all, he might be thinking, standing among the carcasses. And you might have spotted the use of contrast here, Always a really good way to change the mood for the reader. Now, the great thing is, I didn't have to come up with these contrasts. They're in the picture. The artist has done it for me. And whatever picture you get, even if it's a photograph, that will also be true. Now, in my penultimate paragraph, I'm building up towards the ending. And there's one technique that I always use, and I think writers always use, when they're coming to an ending of a text. And it's this, 
At the end, you revisit something that you've seen before and it changes. There has to be a change. Well, that's really easy for you to come up with if you're thinking about the perspective of the artist. You're basically asking, what actually does the artist want us to think when we finish looking at this painting or photograph if it's not a painting in your exam? And so for me, that was quite straightforward. I just flipped this relationship, which looks like it had a predatory male in it. And I thought, well, what if the tables were turned? And actually, I had a predatory female who was more dangerous than the male. A nice little feminist text for you, even though she turns out to be a thief, which is maybe not so feminist. But anyway, trust me, that was the intention. Behind Jack and Bernadette can see this, Three women are shopping. They might be a comfort to her, safety in numbers. But Jack has passed them, and none of them had turned to glance at him. He might be harmless after all. Their eyes are all downcast, focusing on the richness of the stalls, the competing aromas sending their hands into the purses, stroking coins, pondering which flavours to spend on. So perhaps Jack is not a threat. Now, the advantage of this paragraph is it's the moment that I started to think differently. How can I put a twist in here? Now, I repeat, you don't need a twist in your descriptive writing, but if it comes to you, put it in. It's an advanced technique. If you pause and go back on this, you'll see how I've used the senses really skillfully to add depth to the description. Perhaps it is she who has been waiting, waiting by the meat. Notice that her left arm is bent at the elbow, forearm in front of her. She makes as if to fend him off, but what of the fat pockets of his jacket? To brush past him in this narrow path must involve a collision. There's no way out of it now. The artist makes us wonder about the front of the dress. Jack's eyes are also cast down at it. Cleavage? Meat? a suitable distraction. So now the tables are turned. I have an alternative perspective. Perhaps she is the one who is waiting to confront him. So then I get my final line where the twist is explained. Yes, that's it. She has waited for such a man. Her arm will meet him while his gaze is hypnotised. Her fingers will be quick, plucking his wallet from him with practised ease. One of the difficult things with description is working out how to end it. And we were lucky here, there were several characters in the scene, and so we just need an exchange between them. Remember to make that exchange one that happens without dialogue, just action. Notice that this will never turn into a story, because the whole event has probably lasted five seconds. If you would like to know more about this technique, particularly focusing on verbs, using contrast, and putting yourself into the image as the artist, I've actually written a course on this, which contains 17 examples like the one that I've just shown you today. You can find it by logging on to Scoodle and looking for Mr. Size. Scoodle's really cool. It has loads of teachers on it, not just me, although obviously, it's Mr. Sally's that you want, but maybe not. Maybe you need some help with physics or maths or German. So check Scoodle out. The link is in the description below. Now, as you can see, my description is 623 words long. And some of you might be thinking, uh -uh, I'm only going to make 500, sir. I need an example that's shorter. So here is one that is the same, but shorter. Freeze the screen, work out which paragraphs and sentences I removed as not essential to the description. And there you have it, a grade nine answer in only 469 words. And if you'd like some more free videos on how to defeat the description question, check out the ones appearing here and here.